This is the International Soccer Preview and we are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 16. This is the short version looking at the groups of the 2023 CONCACAF Gold Cup. This is Group A, USA, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, and St. Kitts and Nevis. Here we go. Hello, it's the International Soccer Preview. I'm Kevin, and I'm missing my usual co-hosts. Uh, more on that in a second. This is Series 16 of our media cast. It's the short version of the same Series 16, which looks at the groups and teams for the 2023 CONCACAF Gold Cup. Yes, my nephew Connor is currently in the Western Isles of Canada, and my niece, who co-hosted the uh, short series for the 2024 Euro Cup qualifying, is preparing for a trip to Uganda. Uganda. And I have yet to persuade my own daughters, who really aren't into soccer, uh, to come on to the show, but I am working on it. In the short version here, we're replacing parts one and two of the full-length version with a short summary of each team's history and a look at their recent form. We can now include uh, three teams that just yesterday qualified through the playoffs. So uh, let us uh, begin with uh, the USA. And uh, here's the short history of the uh, a short summary of their history. Then, um, and USA is at, uh, at their best known for their grit, and that was certainly evident in the early years, especially in their third place finish in the 1930 World Cup, and their tenacious clinging to a one nothing win over England in the in the 1950 World Cup. But then they all but disappeared from the soccer scene, uh, not even entering the early editions of the regional cup. But they came roaring back in and around 1990 to rival Mexico as the top team uh, in the region. They also battled their way on to respectability at the World Cup, looking feeble in a couple of campaigns in the 1990s, but passing the group stage five out of seven times from 2002 to 2022, with their best finish reaching the quarterfinals in 2002, and their worst, a ghastly failure to qualify in 2018. In the Gold Cup, it's been a first or second place finish since 2005, with the exception of a fourth place finish in 2015. Now, moving on to their recent performance, they have suffered a decline in recent years. That failure to qualify the 2018 World Cup might be seen as errant, except that they were also unconvincing in 2022 qualifying with a particularly poor road record. Their 2019 and 2021 Gold Cup wins do argue their strength in the region, but the tournaments are hosted at home where they're strong, so it leaves a bit of doubt with regard to their overall strength. While 2019 uh, was convincing despite a loss in the final to Mexico, their title win in 2021 was less so, although it was achieved with a B team. It is no doubt, uh, in no doubt, is the depth of players available to them, so much so that it's been uh, complicated to manage. Uh, they will look to get this in order as, as they build towards being the main host of the 2026 World Cup. All right, next is Jamaica. And I'm just organizing the uh, graphics a little bit, which I know are a bit small, but... Um, uh, that's what we have to work with here. And uh, in summary of Jamaica's history, they're one of the strongest teams in the Caribbean local. Uh, that locality, though, is generally weaker than the Central American locality and weaker still than Mexico and post-1991 USA. Jamaica and other Caribbean teams do rise up to challenge at the regional, regional level in their good years. In World Cup play, this means reaching the final round of World Cup qualifying, and Jamaica uh, has only challenged there in 1998, where they finished third in qualifying to reach the Cup. 
Otherwise, they do well to reach that final round and finish in the bottom half if they do. In regional play, Jamaica did not challenge in the CONCACAF championship era from 1963 to 1989. They did well to qualify for the tournament, which they did only twice, appearing weak once there. From 1991 to 2017, qualification for the Gold Cup depended on their performance in the local Caribbean, uh, in the local Caribbean Cup. Despite some inconsistency, they usually reach the Gold Cup and usually pass the group stage once there. Their strongest period was 2015 to 19, where they finished second twice and reached the semi-final in 2019. Qualification now depends on their CONCACAF Nations League performance, and they have managed so far to stay in League A, which is compromised uh, of the top 12 teams in the region. Whether they'll be able to maintain that going forward is on the question. They were not at that level for most of their history, challenging at that level only in the 1993 Gold Cup, the 1998 World Cup, and in recent performances, which seem in decline. But turning to their recent performances, Jamaica is coming off a good period, which saw them finish second in the Gold Cup in 2015 and in 2017. They fell back to a semi-final finish in 2019 and then back to their average quarter-final finish in 2021. This places them among the top eight teams in the region and they have maintained that in World Cup qualification by reaching the final round in 2022, though they didn't manage to do so in 2018. Despite starting in League B of the CONCACAF Nations League, they quickly earned promotion to League A and have thus far maintained that position. All right, well, Nicaragua was supposed to be in the cup, but they uh, were disqualified and gave way to Trinidad and Tobago. So that becomes our third team here. And uh, in summary of their history, Trinidad and Tobago began competing in tournaments from 1966. From the start, they were hot and cold, earning three top four finishes in the regional cup until 1989. Second place in the CONCACAF championship 1973 and third in 1989 also left them one spot shy of reaching the World Cup since the regional tournament uh, tournament acted as a qualifier for the global competition. With the advent of the Gold Cup in 1991, the Caribbean Cup became the qualifying tournament. But uh, though they ruled the Caribbean Cup with eight titles in the first 11 editions, the relative weakness of the Caribbean region showed as they generally were knocked out at the group stage of the Gold Cup. The year 2000 was an exception as they reached the semi-final of the Gold Cup for their best performance. A flat period at the regional level did not match their strongest period at the World Cup level as they reached the round of qualification, sorry, the final round of qualification four of six times in a row between 2002 and 2018. And that, of course, included their only qualification for the World Cup in 2006. Meanwhile, fortunes were erratic in the Gold Cup in, 2000, in the 2010s, failing to qualify for three of the five cups between 2009 and 2017, but reaching the quarterfinals in the two cups that they did qualify for. Turning to their recent performance, uh, Trinidad and Tobago have grown weaker in recent times. That could be defined as the end of a stronger period in World Cup play, where they reached the final round of qualifying, a run that might have ended with a very poor showing in 2022. During that period, though, they were far less dominant in the Caribbean region than they had been from 1991 to 2005, when they dominated the Cup. That did not show in the World Cup, where they have been consistently average, sometimes flat with the typical group stage exits, uh, or else up and down, fluctuating from non-qualifications to passing the group stage. Most recently, though, it's been the former, with group stage exits in the last two Gold Cups. And finally, we're able to include the team that qualified through the playoffs, that is St. Kitts and Nevis, 
St. Kitts and Nevis. Just let me organize the graphic a little bit. Okay. St. Kitts and Nevis are a difficult team to pin down. They have had some success with a good period at the local level in the 1990s, twice coming close to reaching the World Cup there. It was actually dark vaccinations by CONCACAF that prevented them in 1997. Bit of a long story there. Uh, as their second place finish in the 1997 Caribbean Cup should have earned the ma uh, passage but they did not come close otherwise. That period of strength in the 1990s did not show in World Cup play, as it was over by the time of their first entry in 1998, perhaps just echoing uh, in a respectable performance there. They were weak in both World Cup and regional play from 2000 onwards. However, they did pop up with the odd good result at the game level, tying Canada and El Salvador in the otherwise weak campaigns of the 2014-2018 World Cup qualification runs. In the 2014 Caribbean Cup, they challenged French Guiana and Haiti, two of the stronger teams in the Caribbean region, but it remained success at the game level only as they finished behind them in the group. Tour to form is struggling among the middling and weaker teams in the region, best summarized by their relegation to League C of the CONCACAF Nations League in the 2021 in the sorry 2020 21 season. And that brings us to their recent performance. Uh, recent performances have to be seen in light of their shock qualification for this 2023 Gold Cup. And that story really does start with their relegation to League C of the CONCACAF Nations League in the 2020-2021 season, finishing behind the weak Belize in that group. Even in League C, they showed their inconsistency with a home draw against the feeble St. Martin, avoiding a loss there only by an injury time goal. But they are a middling team and predictably won the League C uh, group to earn promotion and also a golden ticket to the Gold Cup playoffs, something that many League B teams did not earn. Their remarkable performance in the playoffs, beating Curacao, who I considered the strongest team uh, among the playoff uh, contenders. Uh, they beat Curacao and then French Guiana, both on penalties. But that is not as outrageous as it appears. They had popped up with good game results before and had finished first in their 2022 World Cup qualifying group ahead of Trinidad and Tobago. So it remains to be seen whether these good showings constitute another good period like that of the mid-1990s. Okay, well, that's the uh, introduction or the, the first part of the short series. So now let's switch over to part three from the full-length version uh, where Connor and I compare and discuss uh, the teams. And uh, just a reminder here that we didn't know at that time that St. Kitts and Nevis uh, would be the playoff winner. So we kind of just talked about the candidates, uh, the playoff candidates in general. And we move on to um, uh, part three uh, of the podcast where we uh, look at the, we're supposed to start with the pot. So I'm uh, just going to add that into the, into the graphic here. And uh, where are these teams coming from, Connor? Um, yeah, so the seeded team, United States, they're, of course, a part one team, ranked second overall in CONCACAF. Um, I'll just get you to scroll down a little bit on the graphic. Thank you. Um, Jamaica are, um, were third out of four teams in part two. Um, and then Trinidad and Tobago took the place of Nicaragua. So really, they, the teams, the groups had already been drawn by that point. So I guess we can say Nicaragua was a part three team. Yeah, and I think uh, Trinidad and Tobago are fairly close to Nicaragua in terms of strength. I don't think it would be... Uh, they might be the pot four team here too. Or yeah, I, the, the fourth in pot three. I agree. It, it, they're definitely a pot three team, um, for sure, out of those teams. So, yeah, not a huge change. And then the pot four team is, is yet to be decided. Yeah, and unlike Qatar, it really will be a, a pot four team. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, well, I guess we'll get a little closer to that uh, when we look at the rankings here. So, um, go ahead. How are the teams looking? 
Yeah, U.S., of course, perennially one of the strongest teams in, in CONCACAF um, since at least the Gold Cup era. They're 13th in FIFA and 23rd in ELO. Um, it's actually a bit of a rise for them. They were kind of in the 20s in FIFA for um, for quite a few years before kind of jumping up to 13th. Um, same with ELO. They were kind of in the 20s and 30s, now into 23rd. But that's probably at least partially based um on their World Cup performance, but saw them get out of the group stage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, how about Jamaica? Jamaica are 63rd in FIFA and 69th in ELO. Um, they've kind of been up and down over the years. Um, this actually represents a little bit of a fall from where they were a couple of years ago when they were 48th in FIFA um, and 60th in ELO, but, you know, pretty consistent, I, I would say, where they've been over the last 10 years. Yeah, I guess in the longer view, uh, pretty consistent. I do feel a bit of a, a, a bit of a weakening in recent times. Uh, how about Trinidad and Tobago? Uh, Trinidad are 104th in FIFA and 115th in ELO. Uh, they have been going down, actually. Um, they're below 100 in both systems. Um, well, when they went there um, a couple of years ago, that was the first time they'd been below 100 in some time. Um, they were 49th and 55th uh, in December 2015. So they've basically fallen by kind of double that um, yeah, in, in that's... their fall, going from the 50s to 100. So, um, yeah, kind of a slow fall for Trinidad. Yeah, that's a bit of a heavy fall. And actually, we do have a, a, a maybe an answer to the pot thing here. I'm actually surprised to see that they uh, were so far ahead of Nicaragua, uh, much more than I thought. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, pot pot three is kind of where they belong, but um, Curacao, we, we talked about them being, um, you know, 119th in ELO, um, Trinidad's 115th, so it's actually not even a huge gap with, I mean, albeit probably the best playoff team there is, but um, yeah. 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 Yeah, so actually it, it kind of uh, it kind of makes the group a little bit tighter uh, with Trinidad and Tobago replacing uh, Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially if uh, Curacao, we'll talk more about that later. But I think if Curacao get get in, it could be a um, a bit of a, a an interesting group. Yeah. But we're getting ahead of ourselves a bit there. Let's move to the uh, head to head records. Yeah, USA has a, a a superior record over Jamaica: eleven wins, seven draws, and two losses. Yeah, and of course a long history there. Uh, and they have met quite a bit recently, uh, most significantly in the 2017 Gold Cup final, uh, which the USA won. But they've met four times since then, uh, most recently in 2022 World Cup qualifying, of course, where USA won the home leg. And no surprise, they tied the away leg USA a little week on the road. Yeah, uh, USA versus Trinidad, it's a superior record, even more superior than it is against um Jamaica, 17 wins, three draws, and just two losses. Holy cow. Well, uh, yes, but one of those losses uh, was pretty significant. Do you remember? I do. That was, uh, I think, their final game in 2018 World Cup qualifying. Yeah, it was. And uh, uh, Trinidad and Tobago actually sent a, a B team to the Cup because they, or to the game, because they really had no chance of. Uh, improving their position in the group and that B team ended up uh, beating the USA and because of events in other games it ended up that the USA was out of the World Cup. Yeah, an infamous result, no doubt. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think in the 2019 Copa America, uh, Copa America, no, that's got to be the Gold Cup. Uh, in the, yeah, uh, uh, the um, USA got a bit of uh, a payback there, winning six nothing, uh, yeah. crashing them there. Okay, and uh, finally Jamaica. Uh, oh, go ahead, you. Uh... Yeah, Jamaica versus Trinidad. Jamaica has a winning record: nine wins, three losses, or three draws, six losses. So relatively even, but still Jamaica with the better record. Yeah, this is a, a, a bit of a Caribbean derby. And uh, as we saw in the histories, actually, Trinidad and Tobago uh, really had the better of them in the in the 90s and the early 2000s. But uh, Jamaica is a bigger country and uh, eventually has kind of taken over the record. Uh, interestingly, um, their last meeting, 
after meeting in almost every Caribbean Cup. Uh, their last meeting was in the 2014 Caribbean Cup final. Jamaica won that uh, on penalties, uh, but they haven't met since. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, well, of course, we don't have the fourth team to compare head-to-head -head records with, so we move on to these uh, odds that we have. And, Connor, I did try to find uh, odds uh, for winning the group, but uh, I wasn't able to find any uh, on the Internet. So all we have is these uh, overall odds to win the tournament. Yeah, USA is given a 37% chance, so up there with Mexico. Um, as the best, no surprise, they're kind of the two teams that always win it. Yeah. Uh, Jamaica, 3.9% chance, and, and Nicaragua, and now Trinidad, both with about a 1% chance. Uh, that's right. Yeah, maybe Trinidad uh, and Tobago slightly higher because of their uh, because of their record. I actually don't know why I have that graphic there, because I, I do have the uh, graphics here, but it actually is still uh, Trinidad and Tobago at 1%. All right. Well, I don't think that's a great place to uh, begin our discussion. So maybe we should um, we should begin it just uh, uh, going through the teams. And the big question for me, Connor, is: Do you think uh, USA is going to bring a B team to this cup? They did play the uh, A team uh, in in the World Cup. I'm thinking they may need some rest, and USA often brings a B team anyway. Yeah, yeah, they might. It's been a busy schedule for them. Obviously, a pretty grueling qualifying for the World Cup as well. Um, I think it's possible, um, you know, which might affect their their odds later on in the tournament, but probably not going to affect their odds greatly here. Okay, well put. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, they do come in with the confidence of having the uh, having the won the twenty twenty one Gold Cup with their B team, so. Uh, and they certainly have the depth of players uh, to be able to do that. But um, I didn't feel that was a really convincing performance, even though they won the title. Yeah, they, they kind of got through some of their games, um, you know, kind of won nothings, couple late goals. Um, I believe it started in, in the group stage even. Um, yeah, I think there was only one game that wasn't won nothing. Yeah. I mean, they hammered Martinique, but um, other than that, it was kind of one nothing all the way to the final. So, you know, not not super convincing. They did play Jamaica in the quarterfinals, won that game one nothing on an 83rd minute goal, and then their other goals were scored in the 86th minute and the 117th minute, kind of on route to winning it. So, not 100% convincing, um, but still have to say the strongest team in this group, probably by by some measure. Yeah, I totally agree with you that it's it's a matter for. Uh... Uh, the the latter stages of the cup. I mean, even if they, uh, I, yeah, I just don't see them finishing second in any way, shape, or form here. Yeah, I agree with you. All right. Well, uh, Jamaica is the pot two team, uh, but are they the uh, are they the team that is going to make it uh, to the to the quarterfinals? I think so. I'm I am excited by this kind of renewed Caribbean rivalry. Um, between Jamaica and Trinidad, kind of the two strongest Caribbean teams historically. Um, so I, I do think Jamaica are in a, certainly a better period than Trinidad, who we, we kind of talked a little bit about their decline. Um, so I would see Jamaica as as favorites to go through in second. Um, but looking at the playoffs, I think it's a good chance we're going to see uh, Curacao make it. Um, they are the strongest team in that group and have a good history in this tournament. It would, you know, this uh, would have been four in a row last time if not COVID interrupted their plans. And I think Curacao are, are good enough to have a say in this group. Uh, I agree with you completely. First, I'll address Jamaica. And uh, you raise a, an interesting point. We saw that uh, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago met often in the past and then haven't met since 2014. I think that'll be a really thrilling game for the, for the, t uh, the, the fans of both countries. And... Um, yeah, I got to say, um, Jamaica is a bit weaker, uh, uh, I think, over the uh, last couple of years, but uh, Trinidad Tobago is even more so. Uh, I really see the challenge coming from uh, Curacao rather than uh, um, Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, despite Curacao still having a lower ELO ranking, I kind of agree. I think Curacao are a, a really tough team. Um, neither Curacao or Trinidad... Uh, made it into the 
Octagon, the final round of World Cup qualifying, which Jamaica did. Um, but um, yeah, Kurt have a have a good history in this tournament, and they've they've got they've been competitive against some really good teams. And I don't think Jamaica and Trinidad are are too far uh, too far out of that. I think Kurchow are kind of a League A or top of League B team, which kind of and Trinidad are at least that, and um, you know not far off Jamaica. I think it'll be close. Uh, do you mean Trinidad is a, 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 a? I think of them as a clear League B team. Um, myself, yeah. is that what you meant? I think they're probably, yeah, League B or bottom of League A. Like, I see them getting promoted out of League B, perhaps not as much recently, but taking a bit of a longer view, I think that's probably where Trinidad fit. And I see Curacao, you know, probably pretty similar to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think um, I agree with you because I think uh, Curacao were really looking good before the 2021 Gold Cup, Uh, getting stronger and stronger. I'm very happy to be there. I think they've regressed a little bit. Uh, since then, but but I think they'll be anxious to to get back on track and and try to do in this cup what they were hoping to do in the in the previous cup. I think they're a real danger, actually. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm I wouldn't rule them out. I think um, yeah, the strongest of all the the twelve teams competing in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, and now we have been kind of assuming that uh, Kurochow is the is the team going to make it. Uh, so that's going to emerge from the playoffs. But maybe we should uh, have a little bit of talk about the other playoff teams and see if there is any threat uh, to Kurochow. Yeah, um, I think Kurochow are playing Antigua, which you'd expect them to win. Sid Mar- Martin are playing French Guiana. You'd expect French Guiana to win that. So, oh, do you mean uh, uh, Kurchow is playing St. Kitts and Nevis, right? Correct. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. said Antigua. That's right. So I, I expect certainly a, a, a Kurchow versus a French Guiana final. I don't Me think too. there's a lot of debate about that. Yeah, I um, think the laws of the universe would have to change for St. Martin to, uh, to uh, <laughs> get past that, uh, that playoff. Yeah, it's not a guarantee. French Guiana are good, and they have they do have a tournament, uh, an appearance in the Gold Cup in in recent years. Um, but I think, yeah, Curacao I think can compete with League A teams. Um, I don't quite see that for French Guiana. Um, so I would expect Curacao, But what do you think? What what odds would you give? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, seventeen. Uh, uh, uh... Curacao are only 17 points ahead uh, in the rankings there, so uh, that would suggest that it's pretty close. But honestly, I think Curacao really have something to prove here, and uh, I think they'll really steamroll their way through that qualification uh, and perhaps, uh, you know, uh, bring bring a very strong attitude to the cup uh, here. I, I will say if it's a team other than Curacao, I wouldn't give them much of a chance at competing with Trinidad. Well said. I, I totally agree. Uh, if 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 it's French Guiana, which it probably will be, if it's not Curacao, uh, I think this this group will firmly end up in pot order. Yeah. Yeah. So Curacao uh, throwing a bit of a spanner in the works there for me. But uh, before I announce, uh, do you have anything else to say, or should we move on to predictions? I'm going to pin you down. I'll, I'll just say with Jamaica. They have a lot of really good players at their disposal. Um, Premier League players like Leon Bailey and Mikel Antonio, um, Bobby De Cordova reed um, Ethan Pinnock with Brentford. The problem is they don't always bring their best. So I think Jamaica kind of depends a little bit on the team that they bring. If I, I'd love to see, honestly, a Jamaica team bring their best players and really have a go, but it always seems that a couple are not are not drafted into the squad or missing for various reasons. So you're um, right. And and even if they don't bring their best, I feel they're a bit like the USA in that, you know, they have uh, they have ample talent, but uh, that doesn't always gel together as a team. I mean, I was so excited when Mit- uh, Mikel Antonio signed for Jamaica, but he almost seems uh, he almost mm-hmm. seems out of sorts there, like uh, um, like he doesn't fit in that well. Yeah, it, it was a bit of an odd thing. He kind of joined the team, but then hasn't been there um, consistently. And he, he, of course, his domestic season went late with West Ham, so I think a bit of a question mark. 
Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I, I totally agree with you. I'd love uh, them to bring their best. And um, honestly, I mean, if, if things go well for them, that they could actually challenge the USA's B team. Uh, that's a bit speculative. But, um, but now it is time for me to, uh, to pin you down. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to hear how this group is going to turn out. All right, I'm going to say USA first, uh, Jamaica second, and I'm pretty confident on that. And then I'm going to assume Curacao win, and if they do, I'll give them third, and Trinidad and Tobago fourth. Wow, you have uh, you have uh, really stolen my thunder. I'm speechless because that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> so I'll throw this question back to you. Uh, given what you've said, what would you say is the most tentative part of that prediction? Probably Trinidad versus Curacao for for third and fourth. Um, I, I do see Jamaica as a step ahead of both of those teams, um, but not at the ability of being able to challenge the USA. Yeah, well, I'd like to disagree with you to add a little controversy to the media, cows, but I, I completely agree. I don't think uh, USA will be challenged for first or Jamaica will be challenged for second. So uh, the only contentious... Thing would be Curacao uh, and Trinidad and Tobago. I think Curacao will be third as well. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, an outside possibility may be Curacao challenging Jamaica, but that would require kind of a lapse from Jamaica and uh, great determination from Curacao, which I think, I think they will come in with good determination, but just not enough to uh, upset the top two. Yeah, I, I also would give Curacao an outside chance of making it uh, if they perform well, but it would require Jamaica being a bit below par. I agree. Yeah. Okay, well, great talking to you about this, and uh, that's Group A, so I will see you next time for Group B. Sounds good. I'll see you then. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. All right, please check the show notes for a link to a short video about our past, present, and future media casts, and uh, all other links to navigate you through our system, including a link to our YouTube channel where each series is separated into its own playlist.